In, in human and in all animals, basically, we have blood sugar regulation. We hear bad things about blood sugar, you know, don't want to have it. Well, you die without it. I mean, you die. And we don't want that to happen. So when you hear people talking about blood sugar regulation, you'll see that um, it actually falls into a normal range, depending on the laboratory, what the values are. But there's a normal range for that, that blood uh, sugar to be at. And when it goes out, it means usually you have some sort of problem, like diabetes, or you have prediabetes, or you have some other problem that's causing that to happen. The whole reason I bring all this up is people ask me about, Betsy, is, can I eat late at night? Should I wake up and eat breakfast? Why are these things important? And it has a lot to do with this, is the best way to sort of demonstrate how that works. So in the, when you wake up in the morning, for most of us, or let me rephrase that, for some of us, we're hungry. Anybody here wake up hungry? Yes, 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 yes. Me too, Brandon too. Anybody not? You wake up and you're like, nah, whatever. Yep, yep, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, right? It varies, depends a lot on what time I get up. You know, <laughs> a whole lot. So it, it, all, all day long, 24-7, your entire life, your blood sugar is going up and down just like that over and over and over again. But when you, are, let's just pretend, wake up in the morning, most of us wake up with our blood sugar at one of the lower levels. You know, so that's why we wake up, we're hungry in the morning for most of us, not always. And then we eat something. So we sort of eat something right here. If we do, yay, eat. And it has a little bit of everything in it, like it has, mm, let's say, toast, you know, poison, and eggs, <laughs> <laughs> and fruit, or whatever. And so because that is a nice balanced meal, it now has carbs and protein and fat, it takes somewhere between 30 minutes for some of it to get in your bloodstream, 40 minutes, up to about 9 hours. So it just depends. The fat takes longer to absorb. So this is, we're just going to focus on the sugar part. So if I have toast, eggs, and fruit, my blood sugar is going to come up and be nice and normal and wonderful and happy for about two and a half to four hours. So the reason why we say eat every two and a half to four hours is because that's the natural time between here. All right? So if I had jelly bellies for breakfast, um, my blood sugar is going to go whoop, doop, and I'm going to feel starving even though I may have had the same amount of calories from the meal, right? So it just depends a little bit on what you eat. So we, that's one of the reasons why we say eat about every two and a half to four hours. In other words, eat five or six times a day. So you eat, let's say, 10, 30, or 11 at night. So this is happening all while you're awake, and then when you go to sleep, you actually experience hunger. So in the middle of the night, like at 2 or 3 in the morning, your blood sugar is going to come down. Your body's going to go, hey, I'm hungry. Feed me. Ah. And then what it does is it sends out a hormone that goes to this not your liver. Your liver looks nothing like this, OK? But this is what it's going to. <laughs> so the body, body sends out a hormone, glucagon, and it says, hey, liver, I need some sugar. Please give me some sugar, because if, if, if it didn't, this would drop down and you would die in your sleep. Thankfully, we don't die in our sleep every night. It's a miracle. Um, <laughs> so when your blood sugar starts to drop, a hormone glucagon comes over and says, hey, liver, wake up. Give me some sugar. So it does. It gives it a nice little kiss of, of sugar, comes in here, and then it goes back up again. And that repeats itself many times, depending on how long you're sleeping or not eating, depending if you might be awake doing that. Um, so when you, when you actually eat, a, or as, as time goes on, and I'm going to make this much smaller, over the night, these, these, these um, lengths of time get closer and closer together because your liver is becoming more and more depleted of sugar. You can always just count on your body. So your liver just went, oh, God, she's not eating. <laughs> Little sugar in your bloodstream, you're fine. But the next time you get hungry, you're hungrier. You're really hungry. You ignore it. Next time you're hungry, it's like, get out of my way. I'm eating everything I can get my hands on because your body <coughs> is telling you to do so. And every time you eat, your metabolism goes up. Every time you fast, your metabolism goes down. So when, when you are fasting overnight, which you have no choice in because you need to sleep, your metabolism is lower. But it's not dead. 
when, you, when people have told you don't eat after blah, 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 o'clock because you'll gain weight, it's because that is uh, born from the diet industry many years ago. So it's not really about anything real. It had to do with if people tend to overeat at night. And so that's why they would just say stop eating at blank o'clock. It had nothing to do with physiology. So as long as you're hungry and you're not overeating throughout the evening, then it's a completely acceptable and wonderful thing your body adores you for. All right. So every time you eat, your metabolism goes up 10 to 15 percent. Every time you, you don't eat, it starts to go down again. So it's about, if you fell into a coma, oh, please don't, um, about, we'd need to give you about 80 percent of what you're currently eating to maintain your body, even if you never moved voluntarily ever again. And that's just your needs. That's what you need when you're sleeping, in a deep, deep sleep. So, just so you know, you don't die, your metabolism keeps going, and your digestive system keeps working as well. So if you eat 11 and then you don't eat, you're going to actually have gone through this, and this is starting to happen to you. These time periods are getting closer and closer together, and your liver stores are going lower and lower and lower. And as that happens, then when you go in for lunch, it's like, mm, ah, I'm hungry, give me lots of food. And that's what happens, okay? <laughs> if you restrict way over here, the pendulum's going to swing and want you to eat way over here because the body is brilliant. The body is amazingly brilliant. And what we want to do is just recognize that if we took our head and threw it over there in the corner and just let our body take care of itself, it would frolic and play and pee and poop and sleep and eat. And it would just, you know, that's what the body wants to do. And we go, no, I'm sitting here listening to this lady and I'm starving, right? And, and it's, that's what we do. We just interfere with our body's desires in that sense. So. But it is, it makes you feel more energetic when you are eating more often. Have you ever noticed you kind of start to wilt if you haven't eaten? Like I, I use my. <laughs> I have a plant in my office, and you know, every once in a while, I'll forget to water it for a few weeks, and it'll be all droopy and miserable. And then I'll water it, and it's like, hey, yeah, cool. Which is, I am so exactly like that. If I don't eat, by the when I get home, I'm like, oh, droopy, weird. And then I go and I eat something, and I feel rejuvenated. I feel refreshed in a way, right? One of the hard things about teaching classes about nutrition is, we talk in big, broad strokes. And it doesn't always apply perfectly to individuals. So if you have a personal question, feel free to ask, too. Yeah. I keep hearing that when you go um, longer periods of time without eating, your body um, burns off muscle instead of fat. Is that true? And Very good question. It depends on how long you go without eating. But <clears throat> generally speaking, yes. If you're talking about what most people do, which is a day or two of sort of skimpy eating so that they weigh less, have the gravitational pull less on their body at this particular moment in time, yeah, that's basically they're losing muscle and water for those, those days. Um, when, when you were talking about people like in a Auschwitz or whatever, they're, you know, they're just in a horrible state of catabolism. Their body's just breaking down muscle and fat and everything, organs, brain tissue, everything. So it becomes really awful. But the, if, again, for me, it's one, one of those, I like to think about the body really holistically. And so why would my body want to do that? What is it trying to do? So the two things your body wants you to do is stay alive and procreate. Okay? And so for it to keep you alive, it will start to break down whatever it needs to to serve the needs of things that are more important. So when you're in the state, let's say you were really starving. What happens is it starts to go to your muscles because there's no sugar in your fat. So you can't break down fat to get sugar. You have to break down muscle to get sugar. And so because of the blood sugar regulation that we're talking about here, it can't drop to zero or you die, all right? Um, it has to break it down from some sort of muscle inside of your body, okay? And that's no fun. The other thing is if you just keep going, let's say, you have to have a test and you can't eat all day long, like a blood test or something. You have to, can't eat for the next day until the next, sometime tomorrow. Um, what will start to happen is as these, these time periods get closer and closer together, instead of sending glucagon, the hormone, to tell your liver to give me sugar, because it will do that, it'll go, hey, give me some sugar, liver. And liver says, sorry, I'm low. I can't give you very much. So your body goes, fine. And it sends out the big guns, it sends out adrenaline. And adrenaline's job is to go and go, 
liver, give me some sugar. But it also, it's, it doesn't really care. It goes to your muscle, it goes everywhere in your body and starts to break it down to try to get some sugar back up in your body. So that's just to keep you alive, keep your brain functioning. Drink water is really important for you because the two most confused feelings with hunger are thirst and exhaustion. And how thirsty and tired are most UCSB students? I'm just curious, you know? <laughs> Oh, very, right? And so when you're really tired, again, brilliant body, thank it every morning when you get up and just give it a nice little, yeah, thanks. Because it, it says, oh, I'm thirsty. And you go, too bad, don't have any water. And so eventually it'll start saying, mm, eat something, because there's always water content in food. I think, and don't quote me on this, it's probably completely wrong, but it's close to 80% of a potato chip is water. So even in the driest thing I can think of, there's still water content. So the body wants to get it from there, and it will do that. Same thing is true when you're tired. Your body will say, go eat, because it knows it gets energy from food. You probably experienced that when you stayed up all night studying, and you kind of go, I'm really tired. I think I'll go get something to eat. <laughs>